You don't have to look too hard to find an accident where hypoxia played a significant role. So it's clearly an important subject. We volunteered Kia to go and get starved of oxygen for us. Hello, I'm Ezekiel, EZ Duran. I work at the FAA. Uh, we're from uh, the Civil Aerospace Medical Institute in Oklahoma City, and we're part of Airman Education. So what we're doing here at Oshkosh is providing hypoxia familiarization training via the PRO. The PRO is a portable reduced oxygen training enclosure. What we do inside there is get the oxygen level to about 7%, which is equivalent to 25,000 feet. The point of the demonstration is to have individuals come in and recognize two to three good symptoms of hypoxia for themselves. So if they're flying in flight or as crew members or pilots, they can recognize those symptoms and execute the emergency procedures that they would need uh, in case there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen system malfunction, or to check their equipment to make sure that it's flowing and operating as it should if they're flying unpressurized. Objective, very good. You recognize your symptoms. We'll start with Maddie. What were your symptoms inside? Um, I first started getting dizzy, and then around two minutes, I started getting really hot and just like a little confused. Like, I don't know. Cognitively got slower. Yeah, sure. What What made you get back on your mask? Um, it just got to the point where I was like feeling really uncomfortable. Good. So, yeah. Good. good. For you? Uh, well, I, I got symptoms real early. I, I thought I felt like half a minute, 45 seconds. You corrected like at, well, yeah, within the first 30, 45 seconds, you yes. definitely have a symptom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was dizziness and numbness and uh, kind of like a constricted feeling in, in the head. Okay. And then, uh, like, two minutes, I was down to 77 and felt it strong use and you said two symptoms go for it so yeah. I did. good good always recommend identify those two or three symptoms now down the road you have to do something like this again and you remember you're off about 215 close to 215 210 right then okay next time maybe I'll try to go a little longer right but your physiological tolerance for hypoxia varies day to day. Right. How much sleep did you get? Did you drink alcohol the night before? Are you hydrated? Is it hot out? Um, are you chronically fatigued? Uh, did you miss a meal? All that stuff's gonna affect you. Along with your athletic performance, like if you take care of yourself and you stay active in some type of cardiovascular exercise, then you're gonna tolerate and deal with hypoxia a lot better. I'm a meathead, so all my fat and muscle requires more oxygen, so I'm no good inside there. But you take like a swimmer, cyclist, or a runner, they usually deal really well inside there with, with, with a lack of oxygen. So, uh, Kier, what you get? Uh, got quite dizzy pretty okay. quickly. Um, and then my fingers started to go numb. Oh, good. Um, yeah, very quickly. Yeah. Good indicators if you're flying. One, you don't yeah. want to be dizzy when you're flying. And then when your hand starts going to sleep, not good. Yeah. Cool. So, Kier, you've just completed a, a, a bit of an introduction to hypoxia training with the FAA yeah. at Oshkosh. Um, it's, I, I mean, first of all, before we get into the detail, give me, your, give me a quick quick summary in terms of you know what was it worth it um, and was, yeah. did, was did you learn stuff absolutely it was definitely worth it um, having never really experienced anything like that before to go into a chamber where you're um, at a simulated altitude of about 24,000 feet and just seeing how the body reacts was fascinating um, and definitely worthwhile to um, to experience in case I go and fly at that sort of altitude in the future hopefully with oxygen there Okay, so, I mean, I know that beforehand you were a little bit apprehensive. Yeah. Um, and you, you kind of put a pulse oximeter on. And you, you were saying your heart rate was a bit higher than normal before you went in. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, I, I think my resting heart rate is normally about 60. It was around about 100 before we went in. Um, but my, uh, the, the pulse oximeter was showing a level of about 99%. Uh, which is pretty pretty good yeah. um, but then it very rapidly went down um, and my heart rate went up I think the, the last I could remember the pulse uh, was up to about 120 and the oxygen level was down to 
67%, which is pretty low, and they told me to put the mask on at that point. Okay, so how, how fast did that happen? Uh, within two minutes, just wow. just under two minutes, I think. So it doesn't, not, not very long? No. And if you kind of think back to, to, to the, your lucidity in your head at, at that, you know, if, you, if you'd have been flying at 24,000 feet at that point, how... There's no way I could safely operate an aeroplane at that altitude without oxygen. I was okay. in, I was in no fit state to operate an aeroplane. Okay, so if, if if you were doing the same, do you now think you would have a better view of the the feelings that as they start to come on? Definitely, they uh, they were teaching us to recognise one or two symptoms that of being hypoxic, and very quickly I recognised that I was dizzy and numb. Um, and my vision started to go bad. Um, and once you, once, you went, once you put the mask on yeah. and started on oxygen, is that a, how long before you felt um, able to fly an aeroplane again? I think within, within a minute, I, was, I, I felt pretty good again. So. Okay, so I guess it, you know, in translating it to outside of the FAA chamber or room that they had here and, and translating it into a cockpit, I'm, I'm, I mean, that, that suggests that if you start feeling those symptoms, you're going to be wanting to reach for some oxygen sooner rather than later. Definitely. Uh, I mean, guess there's no harm in that, is there? There's no, there's no downside to having a bit more oxygen. Yeah, you just want to make sure you do have oxygen with you or someone who has. Yeah, no, absolutely. Good call. So you'd do it again? Yeah, I'd or... do it again. Maybe once is enough. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Recommend it for people who haven't done it? Definitely. Go and do it. Okay, and we'll have to find out whether we whether there's a, an easy way of doing that in the UK or whatever.